Hey guys, Deanne Taylor here. In this video, I'll be talking about the Customer 360 control. This is a new control that came out as part of 2023 Release Wave 1. With this control, we can now visualize data from what is populated in the customer field uh, on a case form. And we can probably use this with other customer fields from other tables as well. If you want to learn more about this, I'll be right back right after this. Before I'm going to show you how we can configure the customer 360 component. First, I want to show you what that looks like. So let me just go ahead and open this case here from within the customer service workspace. And then I'm going to show you it's loading right now. You can see that below account information. So what you will see here is this is that the result when you actually configure that component. I can't really draw straight, but so it kind of starts as you can see right over here and then it ends over here. So this is the entire component that you can see here on the case form. You can also see that if I scroll up a little bit that the details of this component are currently coming from whatever is listed in this customer field. And I'll, I'll show you in a second what this looks like if the customer is a contact versus an account. You can also see that I have the ability here to edit the information directly from the case, right, of the account. So I can edit the account information by clicking this, right? I can now start to edit information, change information, etc. You can see here the address is now expanded. So I can make my updates and then when I'm done, I can go ahead and save that. Now, if I change this to a contact, we're now going to be able to see similar information. Let me just see. I'm not sure if here we go, if I can do Jim Glenn. And now you can see the contact information, right? Again, loading that 360 form. It's now starting over here and it is ending over here. So now you can see the information for the contact in here. All right, so that's what the end result is going to look like. So now let's take a look at how we can configure that. So I'm going to go here to make.powerapps.com and then I can just navigate here to tables. And the first thing I want to do is actually create a customer 360 form right? Because we're actually using that form. We're showing that form using that control on the case form. So I'm going to show you first that the system actually already has a form that's been added to the application, which is the account form for customer cards. So let me just see customer cards if I can find that for you. So here you can see the account form for customer card. So that form is already configured. It has some additional stuff on there on there as well, which I will talk about next week. So let me just give it a second while this loads, but this is kind of allowing you to see what that configuration looks like. So here you can see it says no data available. Uh, and this is what we're going to configure because this has that customer 360 component on there. Now, what I'm going to do here is I am going to configure a form from scratch. And the important thing to know is that this needs to be a main form, right? So keep that in mind. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a new form and it's going to be a new main form. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to look for the customer 360 control and here you can see it is there if you don't see it you can click here on get more components and then again you can search for customer 360 if you then see it in that list you can just click on that and then click add now i already have it in here so i don't have to do that so i'm just going to go ahead and drag it on here 
And once I do that, you can see here that I now get this particular flyout menu, which is going to allow me to pick some attributes or some columns. So let's start entering a couple of those columns in here. Now it's important to understand that this first column that you pick, you cannot change that once you have saved it, once you click done. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start with the account name. Then obviously you can put some other things in here. Um, you can put addresses in there, but let's just go ahead and say, we're going to do main, the main phone here and whatever other columns we want to pick here. You can see here that we can pick up to seven columns here, right? That's going to be showing uh, on that case form. Then we have some of these types of attributes. Those are those composite type of columns, right? So this is, for example, right? You can kind of see here address one is a combination of other uh, columns that are all grouped together in this composite attribute or row, whatever you want to call it. So we have three of those that we can actually uh, enter in here. And then below that, you're going to say, can these guys actually edit the information on this form? So you saw earlier that I was able to edit the related account information, and that's why this is set to yes. If you don't want that, you can set that to no as well. Then do we want to show a border around that control around that embedded account form or embedded contact form, right? Because the contact form, you will create that exactly like I'm doing right now. Then there, there's something about margins here. I'm not going to use any of that. You can also show a static header as I showed you in my article. That's just it's not really doing anything again just showing that static header and you're not going to be able to choose what it shows in that static header right now so and then do we want to enable rich text editor for multi-line text field so if you have a multi-line text field let's actually just throw one in here just for the fun of it we know that the description field is let me just go ahead and see if i can find a description field is multi-line text so then we can uh, utilize that rec rich text editor for that. And if you have a custom rich text editor, you can actually uh, configure that in here as well. So that's really all you have to do. I'm just going to click on done. And you're going to see right now, this is what you saw earlier, right? No data available. Now, if I now go here to components, you can see that we have two. So it's really the customer 360 that we're looking at, right? This is the one that we actually entered earlier and you can see that this first attribute right this first column i can now i cannot change that i can change the other ones but i cannot change the first one that i selected so that that was what i was talking about so what i'm going to do right now is i'm just going to go ahead and, and give it a name right so that's something that you can do in here as well it says account main form so i'm just going to say uh, customer 360 form or customer 360, whatever you want to call that, right? So, and then I'm going to save and publish that. Let's just go ahead and do that. So again, for the contact form, we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to create a new form, a new main form from the con for the contact. And then we're going to add that customer 360 control on that as well. Now, once we've done that, then we're actually going to embed this form or both forms, right? The account form and the contact form on the case form. So I'm going to show you how to do that next. All right, so we're going to go back to tables. And then I'm going to look for the case table. here we are so we're gonna to go to forms and then you get to pick obviously right which one you want to add this to I'm gonna go here to my custom case to form all right so 
the form that we just created, that customer 360 form for account, plus the customer 360 form for contact that I also created, not on this video, but I did it already because it's the exact same thing. They're gonna provide, or they're gonna show data from this customer field, right? So what we're gonna do here is we want to relate this to this customer field. So that's why you kind of see me uh, having selected that. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna add a components over here, and then we're gonna select form right? Because we're going to link this to those 360 forms that we just created. So here you can see, right, we're doing this on the lookup column, the customer fields, and now I can very simply add related forms. So if the customer field contains an account row, then we're going to do our customer 360 form. And we're going to do the same thing with contact. If the customer field has a contact in there, I'm going to show the customer, I can't type it in there, the customer 360 form for contacts. Again, I'm gonna click add and I'm gonna click done. And then of course we want to save and publish that again. But before I do that, you're gonna notice that that customer field is now no longer on this form, right? Because it has that control on top of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the customer field on the form again so we still have the ability to see it and to change it if we wanted to so now i'm going to do save and publish and that's all we have to do for configuration the next step is going to be going back now to the application and adding those forms to that app so let's click back here and now we wanna go into our apps. So I'm gonna look for the customer service workspace. Here we see it. And I'm gonna click here on edit. So again, we need to add those customer 360 forms for the account table and the contact table because otherwise, right, if they're not added, then the system is not gonna be able to show those forms on that case form. So let's just go ahead and add them. Let's just see if I can find them here. Here it is. Here's the customer 360. So I'm just going to add it to the app and I'm going to do the same thing for contact as well. Customer 360. I'm going to say add and I'm going to save this and then I'm going to publish this. And that is all you have to do. Once you've done that, you are completely done and you can check on how your new forms look. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to hit that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you'll never miss another video again. Thanks for watching. Until next time.